Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. I have like something that? for that white claw. This oh. is, this yeah. is what I was seeking when I went upstairs. You know me. I love straws. I don't care what they say about the turtles. You know what? I'm sure. You're just going on record, just saying <laughs> fuck the turtles. I'm kidding. I do care. Okay, I'm gonna go back on record. I feel like there's an echo. I do care about the turtles, but I do think that there is a lot worse things in our planet than straws. What I don't understand, like, I see people pointing at the problem of plastic consumption, but they're only talking about the straws. And it's, why is that? It's, it's definitely because it's an easy fix. It's because I could go to a restaurant and just drink out of the side of a glass like an adult, or I could drink out of a straw like someone like me who loves it but you're not going to do other things to reduce plastic like you're not going to just like stop using c clothes clothes have plastic on them don't they so i'll, I'll quit wearing clothes for the oh, for cool, the cool, environment cool. but like other things like water bottles like this right here you know yes it has metal but like the top is still plastic and like this like yes it's reusable but that is still like really thick plastic that's going to go into a landfill eventually like I think people are trying to say that like straws are like such a one-time use and it's an easy fix, but there's so much other stuff too that it's like okay, yeah, we stop using straws, but and then then what? And I guess it is like every little thing we do does make an impact, but um, I'll just stop, you know, wearing clothes or something because I love straws. Yeah, love yeah stop the clothes before <laughs> you yeah. stop the straws. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I stop. I don't use plastic water bottles. I use a one reusable one. So. And then uh, you're probably saving a ton. You're I probably absolutely. saving a ton with just that. Have you seen the re just ridiculous amount of water bottles at my house at all times at no. my apartment? Okay, so I have seen them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. my roommates think that our water tastes bad. Okay, it does not taste bad. It is normal faucet water. I think that faucet water tastes way better than water bottle water. But my roommates are like, oh my god, no, it tastes bad. I'm like, first of all, get a Brita filter. That fixes it. So they all buy water bottles. I think they're like fifteen dollars. Just yeah. to get one that goes on your, your faucet? Yeah, I don't know. But I, they use water bottles, and then not only do we use the water bottles, but one of my roommates, like, loves to save them because she thinks that we, like, will need them again. But it gets, like, absurd. There was, like, 50 water bottles at one point just sitting on our kitchen counter. And now they're all shoved into the pantry in a bag. And I'm like, why are we keeping <laughs> these? Why are we keeping these? Like, I will admit, like, every now and then I'll use a water bottle to, like, make a mixed drink in or something because it's, like, easy, you know, on the go. And so I'm like, that is nice. But, like, I could have, like, three on hand, you know? We don't need 50. 50 and, and, is like, ridiculous. Then we're just staring. We're just staring at this, like, mass amount of plastic that's never going to biodegrade. It's just, it, we're just staring at it. We're staring at our own mistakes and it, whatever. Makes it kind of sad, but you should just take it all and go recycle it. D is recycling a thing, though? I mean, I know it's a thing, but I hear it's a scam. Wait, how? That probably sounded really stupid, but no, it's just like there's a lot of things that can't re be recycled, and like recycling can only go so far. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Because my understanding is like whenever I think of recycling, I think of reusing that plastic. Yeah. So there's, well, I mean, there's the three steps, reduce, reuse, recycle, right? So reduce or reusing. I actually have never heard that. But what? We're rolling what? with it. No. We're rolling with it. I keep hitting I things. try to be all environmentally conscious. No, like. Here I am. I don't even know reuse, restep, and refocus. I don't <laughs> even know that. No, okay. That's actually crazy. I feel like in every, like, class or, like, environmental class or, like, anything or just on TV or, like, children's shows or anything, it's always in reduce, reuse, and recycle. Ah. And, like. There's always, like, the propaganda that says reduce, reuse, and recycle. There's the three steps. You either reduce, which I think is the best, obviously just refrain from using it. There's reusing, which is what we're, I guess, doing by having 50,000 plastic water bottles sitting there for one to be used every couple of months. And then there's recycling, which is it goes to the plant. It gets mashed down to, like, basically it's com plastic components and then remade into something else. Like, have you ever seen, like, oh, these shoes are made out of recycled plastic? Like, really? Is it? I don't a part of me thinks that's only a marketing is it, ploy. Is it, or is it like the, the like, shoelace plastic parts? What are those called? They have a name, and yeah, I can't they do. remember the and name. And like, we all learned it on Phineas and Ferb. 
that's really upsetting. I that's something I, I need to know on hand I at I all would, times. I just thought I would remember that forever. It also is a song. But anyway, like, is it just that part that's, like, recycled? You know what I mean? Like, is the entire shoe recycled? Is it really? Or, like, certain things like that. I don't know. I guess I'm just skeptical about a lot of things. I bet you a lot of it's a marketing ploy. Yeah. Because people feel better about themselves whenever they're going to oh. go and buy something that's recycled. Oh, I definitely feel better about that. But then I here I am talking about how it's probably a scam. Mm. But, yeah. Stay skeptical. Stay skeptical. I don't know. It's just we've gone into the age of plastic, and, like, where do we go from here, honestly? Like, will it ever, will it ever stop? No. Can we reduce? Can we reduce? Maybe. Maybe. I would have to obviously. Depends how much. It would have to be on, like, an insanely large scale, like, how do we get everyone to do it? It, I mean, have I've, I'm sure you've heard that like, the the new thing is like, oh, it doesn't matter what people do because, it's it's the big companies that are using the most plastic, blah blah blah, blah. and like that's true. That actually, so as you know, I work at PacSun. I'm just gonna name drop that. Um, I don't know, so my fans can come find me. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> third podcast, baby. I'm really getting a big head. Oh yeah. No, um, but. Whenever we're like putting out, we're we're like restocking, right? We get we'll get a box, and then each thing is like individually wrapped. So I'll get a box of like girls' shirts. Each shirt is individually individually wrapped, and then a lot of times like six of them will be wrapped again and like in plastic. And so by the time I have all the shirts out, the plastic is basically taking up like it just as much as of the box. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And we don't recycle. Like there's no place to recycle in the mall. Like. I th- well, there actually, there might be, but we just, like, mainly put it in these big trash cans, and, like, it upsets me. It, like, physically hurts me to just, like, throw away all this plastic, and I'm always, like, talking to my manager who obviously can't just, like, go to corporate and, like, whatever, but I'm always, like, one of these days I'm just going to go to corporate PacSun and s- tell them they need to stop using so much plastic, so mm. that's my life goal, basically, but... No, it really just, even from that, like, the w- small amount that I do, I just see so much plastic. So that, like, over every single store, over the entire country, over the entire world. It gets you thinking. so much. Yeah. It's crazy. It really, it really hurts me. It really does. All that waste, whenever you work a job, all of the waste. Yeah. It I'm sure really you gets it. you thinking. I'm sure you see it, like, waitering. Waitress, you're a boy. Wait, wait, waiting. 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 I, I just wait around. You just, I just wait. wait. But I'm sure you see. Just find random <laughs> spots and I just wait and curl up yeah. in a ball. Yeah, it's a good profession. But I'm sure you see a lot of like food waste and stuff. Oh, absolutely. And that's like also upsetting. Salad. I At Olive Garden, the amount of salad that is wasted. It's because like who likes iceberg? No one. And how much salad is iceberg? People eat it. About ninety-five percent. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like here. It. I'm like okay. I like, you know, I like spinach i'm a spinach lettuce girl um i like a good like mixed green you know but i don't know who likes iceberg like that's crazy it's not my preferred yeah see i just i just feel like it's there's no nutritional value in iceberg there's not it's water yeah yeah and you're so getting like hydrated that's cool yeah. i guess yeah <laughs> but i don't know i like the crunch of iceberg yeah but then it, but it's more texture than anything weird. It just, the crunch makes me feel weird. I'm like, why is my salad so crunchy? I don't know. But stuff like that, that just, like, is so much food waste. Some One of my coworkers was explaining it to me one day about how much salad is wasted and basically how we have to get in a trade war so that we can buy it from these other countries. And whenever there becomes a scarcity of food... Pretty much who's going to end up getting fucked, even if we're the ones wasting, we're the ones consuming the most, it are the poorer countries. Oh, because absolutely. it's like a bidding war for, and why wouldn't it be? It's a free market. That that, it's going to become a bidding war for the scarcity of food. Yeah. And whoever gets it is going to be the highest bidder, and why wouldn't it be? Yeah. That reminds me of uh, some family friends we have at home. They work in the, like agriculture gro- to grocery store business so they like buy produce and sell it to grocery stores and like you don't even know how much goes into that like they have to like if 
the farm if like for some reason the stock or the crop isn't like producing as much as like so say they promise walmart they're gonna have this many ears of corn or whatever like by this date they have to find it like even if the crop is like shit like they say okay walmart i'm gonna get you this many ears of corn and it's gonna it, i'm gonna it's gonna cost this much but that's just like them assuming or like from years past like the statistics of it that they can get that much for that much but say that like that year all of a sudden some like drought hits and so they have to like outsource to other farmers to get it or and they have to like pay more and like all this stuff and there's so much like variability that goes into it and like we literally are just like well don't the farmers just like you know give walmart some corn but there's like them there's like so many middlemen and like so many like variables and i never think about how like food growing food is actually like highly variable like so many bad things could go wrong and like we just assume that since it's like kind of so what's the word like standardized i guess we assume that like it's everything is going to be produced perfectly every single year or whatever but that like could totally get messed up and then i don't know it's just like it, it's really interesting i love hearing about it that's something you would never like be interested in hearing but it is so interesting I don't know why. I've been taking in a lot of information lately that's like fatalistic as fuck. Yes. And it reminds me how vulnerable we all are. Yes. Climate change, artificial intelligence, the the nukes. Um, like, nu- yeah, nukes. I recently found out. I don't know if I'm just stupid. Meteor strikes. Yeah. I don't Okay, yeah, we were talking about that. Okay. Don't let me get, get ahead of myself. But I don't know if I'm just stupid, but I didn't know that like a lot of the nuclear weapons were based in Missouri. I had no idea. Apparently, there's like, or something like that. I don't know if it's like they're based here, but there is like some type of something. And like, the reasoning is because it's so strangely located that, like, if another country was going to shoot off their nukes, they would come to like the place that our nukes are. So we have it in the center of the country so that it has the farthest like time to get there so that we could shoot it out of the sky or whatever. But I'm like, because I was arguing with someone, I was like, ugh it's gonna like hit like new york or something or like freaking california like whatever like the big places like i assumed like nukes would go there mm-hmm. but then the, like the person i was talking to was like no like we are like a like a hub for that like this is a hot spot it's like gonna come to missouri and i was like uh. but then he also argued that we have better technology and that it would be shot out of the air and we'd all be fine but then again i'm like i don't believe that i'm like if there's a freaking nuke coming my way like I'm scared. What would a like, nuke exploding in midair look like? How high is it flying? How big of an know. explosion is that? I don't know what happens. Where does the nuclear where does the nuclear rays disapparate? Or what's that word? Dis- dis- disapparate? Dissipate maybe. Dissipate. Dissipate. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard somebody get so excited about the word dissipate. <laughs> it's because I'm bad at vocab apparently. <laughs> I try to use words that make sense in my head and I forget actually how to say them. It's really it's a connection. Disappearing eight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Gatorade. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, nukes. Scary. But yeah, there's so many things. I've always said this. I always say this, and I'll say it a thousand times, and I'll say it because my dad said it one time, I think, maybe, and then I continued on with it, that, like, every, like, great, like, empire or, like, whatever has fallen, but, like... 100%. But, like, we haven't. And, you know, and, like, I guess, like, we are modernized now, so, like, we just expect that, like, things are just going to go the way they are, or there'll be, like, you know, slight changes, like, this small country might, like, take over a part of this smaller country, but we don't, like, expect anything big to happen, but, like, okay, like, what if something does happen? Like, World War Three is going to be, if it happens, it's going to be on a whole new level. Like, we have, like, we have so many more, like, ev- weapons, everything's going to be all digitized, like, that's going to just, that's going to have so much more like civilian impact than ever before and like that could like legitimately be the end to like very large countries and like superpowers of the world because world war ii very little happened on american soil yeah well you get pearl harbor yeah is that the that's the only thing i'm to my understanding what pearl harbor and then Mm 9-11 those are like the only two things that ever really happened on american Mm -hmm. soil besides the civil war that's crazy to think about. And the Revolutionary War. Oh, yeah, but it wasn't America's one. So, like, whatever. It was, like, British back then, whatever. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. some fucking colonies or something. Uh, yeah, but exactly, like, you know, it's not hard for them to get over now. Like, it's not hard for people. It's way more accessible. To, like, just hop across the ocean. It's, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Everything is... I think we've talked about this before, but just, like, the fact that 
we just expect every single day to just like wake up and be fine and like we could totally not do that and that's like really scary i kind of <laughs> like learning about information like that because then it kind of like makes you appreciate your life more perhaps. yeah it also humbles you out to your own vulnerabilities and like what if something does happen like there's so many you know end of the world disaster tragedy stories like would me and you really have the skills to survive i doubt it like I doubt it. My bet's going to be on hunter-gatherers. Yeah. The modern-day hunter-gatherers. Like, like, maybe I'd be able to survive just because my dad is a doomsday prepper, and, like, we would probably have, like, a huge artillery. I have no doubt about that. But, like, how how far <laughs> how far is that really going to take me, you know? Like, I might be able to protect myself, but can I get food? But, uh, yeah, like, those Boy I wonder scouts? if cell surface would work. No. No? No. So you have no way to contact those that you love, so you're kind of stuck with those that you love, assuming they're even around and accessible to you at that point assuming in time. Assuming they're even alive. Yeah, if they're alive. I think it's going to be, like, definitely the Eagle Scouts of the world that are going to... The Eagle Scouts. <laughs> they're going to be the ones. Them and, like, people that are already, like, really, like, live off the land, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just we're so comfortable in our lives. That's, like, terrifying. Like, just thinking about, like... Like, something like that. Like, if you're thinking about cell service, like, I'm thinking about just, like, trying to get food. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to kill things. I don't know what I don't know what roots are safe to eat. What if we eat a mushroom and die? What know? would you do? And I guess you have to throw out this scenario of how the world's ending. I guess that's Or how, true. like, there's a massive shift in population or decline in population. I, th I think, I think my, okay. I think it's either going to be a huge epidemic from a lab. Okay. I think it's either going to be a epidemic that was originally, like, man-made to do some good and then gets out and, like, kills everyone. That's my biggest theory. I've seen a lot about that. What's your first response? My you hear that they have just infiltrated America. Like, this, this virus is on American soil. It's on the East Coast right now. That's all you know. I don't know. Quarantine? <laughs> I don't know, go to my dad's doomsday bunker that I'm sure he has that I haven't actually heard about. But <laughs> <laughs> Dad, if you, if you hear this, hit me up. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't see it as, I don't know, I guess, like, biological, are you talking about, like, biological warfare? Because I'm talking about, oh, like. Oh, goodness. Well, because I'm just talking about, like, something in a lab is leaked somehow. And it just. Unintentionally. Unintentionally. Or, I mean, biological warfare, too. I just think that that's, like, a really probable thing, like, because, I don't know what else, I mean, nuclear weapons, I feel like if that happens, I like, we're all dead. But I think that they could shoot it out of the air. Like, I'd, the meteor thing, super unlikely. Um, what else is there? Uh, okay, another option is if w that one volcano erupts. That's not good. To my Yellowstone? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I heard St. Louis be covered in 10 feet of ash. Yeah, so we're looking at a Pompeii situation over here. Yeah. So that's a... That's I'm curious what the East Coast would look like, because I would, I would just assume that most of the West Coast is fucked. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Northwest is all fucked. I, I'm curious with, like, Texas, Florida... Texas? Fucked. Think it's so? It's close enough. It is close. I would say, like, maybe... What is that, Maine? Uh -huh. Maybe Maine could get away with something. Maine and uh, Florida, maybe? Rhode Island, I, I don't know. Maybe those, like, yeah. Those northeast. Yeah, I would say those are, like, really the... But who, even who knows, like... Is there any way to prevent that from happening? I don't know. I think I learned about this in literally, like, I don't know, sixth grade physical science when we were, like, learning about faults and stuff and, like, volcanoes and other things. And I remember, like being terrified and i'm still to this day like that's one of my like low-key biggest fears and i forget about it and then i remember it and i'm like oh my god we're all just like aware of that yeah that you know? could <laughs> like, happen yeah that's like have you ever, have you seen those th I, i've recently been seeing like memes that are like wow quicksand was so much more of a danger as a child than it is today or like when you when you were younger and you like learned about quicksand where you like sc i was scared of it i was like i'm gonna get caught in quicksand like i was pretty sure that was gonna happen sometime in my life and i was gonna need to know how to get out yeah right that's never gonna happen i mean maybe for <laughs> you, you like really go on some weird adventure maybe when you're in australia but yeah stuff like that i don't know where i was going with that but that just reminded me of that that um 
a lot of stuff when you like that you hear when you're younger that you're like terrified of they don't actually like affect you like the Bermuda Triangle. That's a really funny example. <laughs> but like Yellowstone's so real. Yeah, it's so yeah. real. Yeah, and people are like, "What? There's a volcano there?" I came up with a solution <laughs> a few years back, and I would love to hear. It's that. a simple solution. I think it's super easy, but I know nothing the city about of volcanoes. Ember. What's that? Nope. Okay. Just created a whole new civilization somewhere. Underground. Underground. The City of Ember. Have you never read that? No. Oh, well, I, I guess that, uh... Wait, was that the, that movie that came out? It was probably terrible. 2010, something like that? Probably. Um, was it I, a blonde girl? I don't remember. Probably, she was probably 12 or something. I don't know. I, I just remember finding her really hot at the age it came out. I was like, oh my god, she's to, so hot. We don't need to rehash that. <laughs> Again, but um, no, the city of Ember. It was one of those books that I read in grade school because I was like a huge nerd in grade school. I don't want to brag, but I had the second most AR points in the school. Um, physical. AR, second most. Mm, yeah. Second, second most, most AR points. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. Was I a nerd? Probably, but um, the city of Ember. You just like build a tum- tunnel under the ground, and everyone lives under there. That's what I thought you were gonna say. But you, you do your thing now. So I know nothing about volcanoes at okay. all. Like seriously, nothing. Okay. But I'm assuming it is almost like a like a sewage tank underneath the the volcano, underneath the, the top of it. So underneath, all you got to do is dig a hole along the side of it and then go down deep underneath, dig a, bil- a bigger hole. And then what you do is you just dig. You send somebody. I see I'm burping now. Yeah. Your, your biggest fear is happening to me. <laughs> I'm burping in the middle of this. White Claw does make you kind of burp a little bit. It's just a lot of bubbles. Just a lot of bubbles. I'm feeling bubbly as well. Ooh. Just a bubbly, bubbly guy. Bubbly boy. A bubbly boy. Bubbly boy. Bubbly boy. That's the name of this game. But no, I was thinking, you just go, you drill a hole, and then you dig a big hole, and then you connect that hole to the hole of all the magma. So and you just have it filter down because I'm assuming volcanoes are going to work under pressure. So because what what else would they shoot up in the air for? Yeah, it's so going to be pressure build. There up, right? is all the magma. Uh huh. And I'm from my belief, a volcano is like. I don't think it's necessarily tectonic plates, but like when two whatevers like l- like uh, crusts like crusts. You know how there's like the magma and then the crust is like floating on top or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like when goes like this and so under that is all just like the magma so i don't think that there's like i don't think it's like there's just like this vat of pressurized magma ready to spew out i just think it's like okay and then somehow it would come out i don't know but uh great theory don't don't know much about it either but we'll just well i think it's great okay cool and you should just tell all the you could tell my brother he's a geologist. I bet he could fix that problem real quick. Yeah, I'll he just could just be like he could relay it to the other geologists of the world he knows. That yeah. he's probably none of them because he's not even working in geology. But like you know, his like geology professor here, it'll eventually get up the chain to like what, like a Harvard professor or something, and then he'll be like, "Bro, I heard on this podcast you just got to do." And we just hole. fucking fixed volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> we just fixed them. I saved Dude. America. I saved America. You did. Uh, you will be on the next minted, uh, dollar bill. Yep. Next coin. Yep. The, the we'll next, just get uh, Lincoln off there. He'll get on the penny. I'll, I'll take it. Humbly, humbly, I'll take it. Except we're going to get rid of pennies, so. Have you heard about that? No, I was going to say I'm the next cryptocurrency. I'll Ooh. just be like the first face of cryptocurrency. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> That's so good. But no, I haven't heard this. No, getting rid of pennies. Not, uh, not necessarily that it's like a thing that's gonna happen, but it should. About just because like it's they cost more yeah, to produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to a podcast, so this is like Inception, actually. That I was like, I'm talking about a podcast on a podcast. Mm. But I was all about that about how unnecessary <coughs> pennies are. Oh yes, that ASMR, ASMR, ASMR. Yep. Um, and just how unnecessary they are and how it actually helped the economy. It would help the, like, w- what, the national treasury that actually mints the money. Like, it would help that. It would somehow, like, 
I don't know, somehow help inflation or some some crap like that. I don't know. But I listen to this whole long thing, and I don't know. I'm on board. I don't have all the facts, <laughs> but I say we get rid of that penny. They 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 convince me. And also just like get the fact rid of that penny. Th- yeah, and just like the fact that if you're walking on the ground, are you gonna pick up a penny? Like genuinely, if you're sweeping, if you're sweeping, do you? S- I don't know if you sweep. I don't know. You, you're not on the. You're, that's not one of your chores on the list, so I don't know if you do it. <laughs> if you're sweeping and you sweep up a penny, do you do you take it out? I'm going to be honest. I've thrown a penny away before. Probably more than once. I don't know if I care much. I'm going to be honest. If I'm cleaning out the bottom of my purse and there's, like, three pennies and a, just a bunch of, like, crumbs or trash or whatever, I'm just throwing it all away. I'm just dumping it all out. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I've thrown away many pennies, many pennies in my day. I feel like I'm micro Bill Gates. Have you ever heard that stat? If Bill Gates takes the time to pick up a $100 bill, then he's actually losing money because he's making more money in that time yeah. than it takes to like, yeah. bend over and grab it. I feel like a, I'm like a micro Bill Gates right now because I don't think I'd pick up that penny. Yeah. I'm kind of balling. Yeah. Oof. That Which or I'm I mean, just like not Jewish, one of the two. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's why you need to know. I think we need to cut this short. (laughs) I'm just not in the mood to talk anymore. (laughs) Uh, I would like you to know that I am a religious studies minor, and I am personally offended by your uh, statements. But are you actually Jewish? No. Oh. No. I was like, I didn't think you were. I just really appreciate the Jewish faith. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I got nothing bad to say about it. Hey, no hate, no discriminate. <laughs> Drop that beat. Yeah. No dissipate. <laughs> no disappearate. <laughs> disappearate. Uh, what were we even talking about? Pennies. Pennies. Then you became anti-Semitic, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody would care. I don't think very many people would care if nickels were like the smallest form of currency. It'd be like, I mean, it would be like. You can't have, like, any more TV ads that are like, oh, three installments of 1999. You know, like when you were a kid and there was, mm-hmm. like, some really cool thing. But they could still do 1995. Yeah. But, like, even that, I think they were, I think, honestly, I think what I was listening to that podcast was going as far to say as to even getting rid of a nickel. <gasps> I know. I know. I don't even want to say it. It's crazy. But... I don't know. I think there would be more that go into it. I mean, people would ha- really have to. <laughs> would really have to change prices and whatever. I don't know. Some people might. I mean, people like to freak out about dumb stuff. So we might have some ridiculous protests, like save the pennies. <laughs> 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 people like forget about all the like ag- dying animals and like gun control, and they'll just be like, save the pennies. <laughs> That's funny. That's, That's it. funny. That's all we care about. Honestly, I might just tell the government this. If they're trying to cover something up, that's great. That's a great, just get rid of the penny. It'll be all over the news for so long. And then just saturate the media with that's that. That's what they should have done about, you know, when Epstein was murdered and not and didn't kill himself. Oh, that would have been a great cover Yeah, up. that would have been such a good cover up. What did they do? Nothing. They didn't do anything good. I mean, obviously, like, everyone knows he didn't kill himself, so... Everybody who's woke, at least. Woke. If you're actually woke. If you're actually woke, then you know you know. Yeah, if you know you know. If you ever look at, you know, Twitter or iFunny, then you know, for <laughs> sure. There's, yeah. Do you s- I can't believe I just actually admitted that I still go on iFunny at, as an adult. It's fine. But I'm not judging. Many people do. I go on Reddit from time to time. I go on Twitter. Okay, Reddit is fabulous, though. I, I'm honestly, I'm not one for it myself, but I feel like you can, like, really, really get something there. I need to get on there more. I yeah. really do. I need to get on Reddit a lot more than I, I do. I genuinely don't really know how it works, but... <laughs> Come on, Emily. I'm so sorry. I'm get disgust- yourself together. <laughs> Disgusting. Um... I don't go on a lot, but the people that I've, like, heard that are, like, deep Redditors have, like, their weird niche that they Reddit about or li- that they, like, it's, like, really informative and woke. Mm. So, I don't know. I might want to get on there. I, th- I think I could, I think I could find some cool shit on there. I think so, too. 
it's it's a different kind of person. It's usually a guy. He's usually a little bit like quirky. Yeah, I think quirky's a good word. He probably plays video games as well. The like so the the people that I'm thinking of this is not the, the not the example of anyone that you would ever think that go on Reddit. But the people that like there's these two specific guys that I worked with that were like really big into the like fashion game, if you will, like metro style, I would say like very like you know, West Coast, like, all that stuff. They, like, buy and sell, like, ridiculously expensive things, like $700 shirts and stupid shit like that. And they use Reddit for that, like, to see what the trends are and, like, see how much things are going for and, like, discuss and, like, stuff like that. And, like, listening to how much actually goes into it and, like, how much they utilized Reddit was, like, so interesting. I remember, like, overhearing their... Well, they kind of included me. Not really. They think they're cooler than me, probably, but whatever. But... Um, I remember like learning about it from that and that was like that's such a like weird thing that I would never think that Reddit would be used for but it was to analyze trends and then yeah. use that to make a buck mm-hmm. that's actually cool that's oh, yeah. really cool these guys like are crazy like the the stuff they sell sell is like so expensive and like one of the guys he's so funny he, he does that he like he he's uh, he like manages local music groups and like bands and like stuff and this man, like, he started all this stuff, like, when he was, like, probably 16, 17. Like, I have never met an entrepreneur like that guy. Like, he can talk himself into or out of anything. And, like, he could sell anything. He, like, he's, like, yeah, like, the stuff he sells is so expensive. He'll be, like, I did this trade for this trade. That guy got ripped off, like, $200. Fuck that guy. But what <laughs> up? You know what I mean? He's, like, he didn't know. And then, like, he'll be, like, yeah, I, I got this client set up at this place, like, this place. And then he, like, hype mans for them and, like, gets crowds and, like, does all this stuff. And I'm, like, dude do you go to school? Because this was, like, back in high school. Like, when we were, like, junior, seniors, I was like, do you, do you go to class? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. And, like, we'd be at work, and he'd be, like, doing deals. Like, it was at Paxson, so, like, uh, it was, like, fine. But he'd be like, oh, yeah, I got I got a sale coming in. I'm like, you're at work. Like, you can't just, like, be selling your, your like, your Yeezys, you know what I mean? Like, to people at work. And, like, he did. I think so he what was he it. doing? He was buying, like, Yeezys or he's buying, like, vintage denim or something like that, and then he would just flip it? Yeah, and so, like, there's a lot about, uh, like, high fashion that you don't know because... Oh, there's a ton I don't know. No, yeah, just, like, even brands, like, I, like, learned, like, Off-White. Like, have you even heard of that? No. Like, that's, like, a pretty, like, expensive brand. Like, we, like, Fear of God, Fog, like, that's not super expensive because we sold a lot of the basics in store. But those would be, like, that stuff, hoodie r- runs for, like, $200, stuff like that. Just, like, and, like, so, like, Fear of God, like off white and like then getting into like you know like gucci and like all those like really s- like high end brands like even just like supreme or like all those things it's it's about the brands like it's it's not even about like vintage denim or anything necessarily like yeah like cool pieces but it's like buying and finding like brands and then being able to like flip them to people who want the brands that don't necessarily like know how to get it themselves and like say and it's like the s- whole supply and demand thing because those high end like First of all, high-end, like, companies don't sell a lot in the Midwest. Second, like, there's a scarcity. Like, most high-end brands are only going to make so much of whatever. Um, and, like, especially, like, when the, the Yeezys. Am I saying that right? Like, those shoes, the freaking Kanye West shoes. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Yeezys. When those came out, let me tell you, everyone at PacSun was freaking out about them. They were like, yeah, I'm going to get some. Maybe I'm going to keep them. Maybe I'm going to sell them. Yeah, they're going on eBay for, like, 800 bucks. I'm like freaking kidding me like it, i don't know it's just ridiculous the whole thing's ridiculous i'm like i like to buy my clothes for like five dollars mm-hmm. like bring me to a thrift store please like i'm way more about like utility and like simple fashion rather than brands and i just think brands are like ridiculous and like, same really stupid i it's crazy that they can get so many consumers on a mass scale just obsessed with their brand i mean that's exactly what they want branding is insane it's from, insane like, clothes to anything to just like youtubers in general my god i don't know how youtubers freaking sell their merch or sell themselves or like get these people obsessed like that's insane to me or like i just started seeing youtube merch like recently like within this past year i started seeing it out now more and more and more yeah yeah Co- or uh, noel just dropped some oh really yeah our boy see i i love these our youtubers boy. yeah right <laughs> i love these youtubers but I don't, I don't know. I don't I think I'd ever buy their merch. I don't think I care enough that much. I mean, like, I might, 
if it's someone I like. I might buy a Cody Co thing if I l- really like it, and if it's not that expensive. Good point. And I'm like, okay, that's cute. I'll it's a nice hoodie it. that yeah. maybe you could wear for like four or five years. Yeah, yeah, something that's like something I would just buy anyway. You know what I mean? And then it's also the extra sentiment of like supporting their like whatever. But I'm not someone that's like, dude, I gotta get that new fucking like drop by Tana Mojo. Like hell yeah, gotta get her biker shorts or whatever. I just watched a vlog with her and Jake Paul for the first time the other day. That is... Because I didn't really know who she was until then. So cringy. I watched... And I watched one with her and David Dobrik and she's straight up just telling David Dobrik that she wants to fuck him. Like, she, That's like, tells so him that, like, four or five times. David Dobrik is, like, a fetal child. What does that mean? He is just so innocent looking. No, he really is. He, he really is. He, every single picture, he just is, like... Placard's big smile on his face. Like, I feel like there's literally, like, like red cheeks. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he's, like, one of those, like, super happy anime characters. Like, he's just, like, <laughs> he's literally just, like, he's just so happy. And, like, his, his like, vlogs are honestly, like, so pure and, like, innocent. And it's, like, I cannot imagine Tana Mojo, like, yeah, tainting him with her sexuality. I don't uh-huh. know. Like... No, I see the same thing. I see him as so innocent as well. Like his, he probably is I imagine just jack cheekbones like, from how much he smiles. <laughs> it used to creep me out because I followed him on Instagram. Like I think I watched like four or five of his vlogs because I had a friend who introduced me to him. So I, I watched like four sure. or five of his vlogs in one night. They actually, it was probably more than that. It was probably closer to like ten. They laugh a fuck ton. Like they an obnoxious do. That's amount. That's like all it is. Like an, it really it's is. 90. So I it, they're enjoyable though. They're entertaining. But... I found him on Instagram, and I, I was like, what the fuck is this? This yeah. guy just smiles in every picture. But I, I still like him. I, I don't, like, love David Dobrik, I but I think, think he's, he's, hilarious. he's good. Yeah, but he's one of the – he's closer to, like, an OG YouTuber than a lot of the YouTubers on the market. And he's sweet, and I like his brand. I like a lot of his – I follow a lot of his friends, too, like Scotty Sayer and um, there's another one. And then he has this one friend. His name's, like, Dom, and he's, like – I don't know what – ethnicity but something and like his like name is like dirty dom and like he's in very few of Do- david's things but i've watched a couple compilations of like dom stuff and like his stuff is the funniest like if you watch the compilations of like him in those videos he is like by far like to me the funniest of the group mm-hmm. and but then his his instagram stuff is not funny and he's just, like, he's trying so hard. But he just, like, will naturally be in the videos, like, kind of rarely. Or, or they'll just, like, go up to him or, like, kind of small snippets. But everything is, like, always hilarious. And he's, like, caught off guard and stuff like that. But then his actual, his, like, own branding and stuff is, like, not funny. And I think that's really interesting. That is funny. That is weird. I don't know. YouTube, y- YouTube sensations are, like, the biggest just question mark of my life. Because, like, honestly, that's the dream. Like, if I could be a YouTube sensation and literally make money off of people thinking I'm funny, I would – that would be my dream. Like, that would be amazing. That would be really Because cool. it's like you have a high enough level of celebrity that, like, you know, you're someone but not, like, too high that you're a movie star. You know what I mean? That, like, high enough that, like – I don't know. And then also, like, you make money off of it. And then also, like, people just genuinely think you're funny. And then they, like, like oh, that, that girl's so funny. Like, I aspire to be like her or whatever. But, like, that would be so cool. But, like. YouTubers kind of are the celebrities to the youngest generation, though. Yeah. They really are. They're, like, they're. David Dobrik is the Leonardo DiCaprio to 12 year olds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, we've said this, like, we've said this multiple times. We'd rather go see. Cody Ko and meet him than like some movie stars or like oh, most for movie sure. stars like Leonardo DiCaprio I'd be pretty starstruck if I met him same and like his work is incredible his movies are incredible and what he's doing for the environment incredible same with like Ashton Kutcher like he's a really good role model he's a really good actor he's funny he's cute he's cool people like that I mean like Jennifer Aniston like I'd be cool if I met her or like a lot of like Miley Cyrus love that girl I, I'm a Miley I'm a Miley girl you know but like just a lot of the other ones, it's just like, no, I'd rather I'd rather meet YouTubers for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Like Britney Spears, I could care less. Katy Perry, I could care less. Yeah. 
I think I would only care for both of them because they're physically attractive. That's it. I don't think I'd care about their work at all. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who else. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But there a lot of rappers. I don't even think I'd care that much. Oh no. Okay. It's if like I you can make good sounds. You I make good sounds that I listen to when I work out sometimes. <laughs> when I'm in in the club. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I don't think I'd be that excited to meet Wiz Khalifa. Oh, no. I don't know. No. I don't know. The only person, only, like, rapper, I'm going to throw air quotes around that one, that I would be, like, absolutely just freaking ecstatic to meet is Lil Dicky. Yeah, that I would be cool. I love that man. I'm pretty sure I would propose, just, like, on accident, because I love him so much. Just like, hey, and just nice like to will me. you marry me? <laughs> like. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll <laughs> I, get up. I'll stand up now. Can I be Mrs. Lil Dicky? <laughs> can I, Mrs. Dick, please. <laughs> can I be? Lil LD? <laughs> Miss LD? I, I have your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase. I have I Heart Lil Dicky underwear. Just so everyone knows, I don't actually have his underwear. That would be, <laughs> that would be so much cooler. That would be... Act, I, that would be I, well, maybe... That would be pretty cool. Kind of weird. Whatever, I'd run with it. <laughs> that would be cool. That'd be fantastic to meet a little dicky. Because he's, he's a comedian as he's, well. Yeah, that's like his thing. He's funny, and I think that really goes to show. I think we really, uh, I think what we just found out here in this conversation is that me and you personally value humor over most skills. And we've talked about that before. But I think that that's what we're getting at is like humor is like is the skill that we value. Like yeah. acting Eh, singing, okay, but like humor, like that's what we care about, and like I think it would be so much cool, to, cooler to like hang out with a comedian than like anyone else, cause like they're gonna f- be freaking funny just hanging out with them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know, but yeah, I love Lil Dicky. Yeah, I think I value humor more this? than anything. It it really is. It's such an it's an audience based skill, like an yeah. an opinionated based skill, and some forms of humor resonate with you so much more than others you know i think do you know who churdley's is uh i cannot say that i do he's got like a very unique kind of humor mm-hmm. he's got his own approach to humor and he's he's really funny he's really funny but i don't find him as funny comparatively to cody ko yeah or jimmy tatro and everybody has their own appeal they, their own style their own approach to humor so it's it's so cool how Somebody can come in from this angle, from this angle, from this angle. And it's it really is kind of like the hardest thing to reproduce or recreate. Yeah. It takes so much. It's like it it takes intelligence to have comedic jokes. It takes um, personality and uh, everything to have the delivery of it. You know what I mean? It takes confidence to be able to put yourself out there. Like it takes so many skills. It's not just like this or that it like literally takes like every part of you to be able to actually be a good comedian and actually come across funny you know it what takes I mean? humility too yeah. that's what i've noticed stand-up comics seem to be some of the most humble people oh, out I there think so too and it's like they're okay with embarrassing themselves they're okay with making fun of themselves and i think that's a great quality is just being like so comfortable with yourself that like yeah you might say something stupid and not get a laugh or like you might actually just have to make yourself look dumb to get the laugh or whatever but like that's just all part of it, and yeah. So I think they are definitely very hum- humble. I feel like some like the best stand-up comedians, you won't find one that isn't able to joke about themselves or make fun oh, yeah. of themselves, and then that's something I look for in friends as well. If you can't take a joke or make fun of yourself, I agree. Because you know, I'll do that, it for That's you. kind of a red flag, <laughs> honestly. If somebody, yeah. it, especially if they're the kind of friend that they are giving their friendship, but they can't take it, yeah, it's kind of a red flag. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh my god, I was, I was just like totally blanked. Oh, I was gonna say that going back, cir- circling back around to the YouTubers thing, and my let's just bring it back around. <laughs> and my just strong dislike for the the Paul brothers, I just genuinely feel like they can't make fun of themselves. And that is what makes, is one of the things that makes them not funny. They don't have whatever trait that is to like make fun of themselves. And like, and like a lot. It's big egos. Yeah. And a lot of YouTubers, like they don't have that trait. Like, like Cody Ko and Noel, they have it. Like they they will just rip themselves apart and it is fine. 
but and then obviously they're equally just as confident about themselves because they know they're awesome but like a lot of youtubers like they're just not funny to me because like they don't have that humility like they don't have that ability to take a joke like they don't have that ability to like be roasted by someone like cody ko and then think it's funny like maddie fucking smokes cool ass dude he was like yeah. saw that video he said you know what that's fucking hilarious yeah. But like the Paul brothers, he also no. saw an opportunity to capitalize yeah. too. But he, yeah, he yeah, did. totally. But like, even if it was ninety percent capitalize, being able to capitalize, and ten percent, yeah, that is kind of funny. I can make fun of myself. The Paul brothers cannot do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's ego. And there's it's a lot of YouTubers ego. that could not do it. And that's just like the thing. I don't know. That's that why I like. I, I, uh, I think way too many people look up to rappers. Way too, way too many people look up to rappers, and they just have these massive egos. If there's any form there's of nothing to creativity look up to, that sorry. I look up to, yeah, right. If there's any form of creativity that I really look up to, that I really admire, I think it would be comedians for that exact reason. Me because too. they're able to joke about themselves. They're able to laugh at themselves. They're able to make the entire crowd laugh. Like that's so much harder than making a, an entertaining song. Yeah. I oh. mean, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's hard to hit make like a banger, you know. I'm not I'm not musically gifted by any means, but so is Travis Scott really that gifted? I'm honestly, I don't really think I'm that call guy's bullshit. like bullshit. <laughs> like, no, yeah, I don't think he's like that so talented. Either. Like he's not that talented in comparison to Bill we're about, Burr. We're about to get like beat up. Yeah, right. right we're about to get jumped. <laughs> The day after I upload it, I'll forget I even made that up that statement. No, I really don't. I don't think they're like that talented. Yeah, I don't either. I, I've thought that a lot. It it's also like there's a lot of musicians who are like, how I'm like, how did they get famous over like other people that are like like you'll see people on on shows like The Voice or like whatever, and their voices are just freaking beautiful. And then you see like actual famous people that are like auto tuned, and you're like bro, this person might not, like, why are you famous and this person isn't? It's opportunity, I guess. It's image, I guess. It's, like, it factor. I don't know what it is, but it's, like, that's kind of ridiculous that, like, certain people are famous over, like, these absolutely amazing singers that are just, like, singing in their church choir or, like, whatever. You know Absolutely. What I mean? I've thought about know. that, too. There's no way we have the most talented people oh, all the time. No. There's no way. It's, like, and, the, and it'll never be that way. It's, like, 99% opportunity one percent talent like because it just really is like i mean you have to be talented enough and then everything else is opportunity and i guess hard work and stuff and like i guess having a niche like little dicky has a niche like he has he has a specific type of thing and like s other certain people do too but a lot of people are just kind of the same thing over and over mm -hmm. I'm curious how many SoundCloud rappers could reach the same level of fame. And I'll just keep it on the same guy, calling out the same dude, Travis Scott. Like, how many people could reach that level of fame? He is crazy famous. Like, he, my my point being, I think he, he has some good. One of the Jenner Kyle. Yeah, he's. I think he's married to one of the Jenners. I don't know which one. I I don't know which one's which, but. He's he's married to one of them. I'm pretty sure. Maybe they're dating. I don't know. I thought they were married. I know. I, th I know they have a kid together. Though. I think he was dating Kylie, right? She's like nineteen. Really? Yeah, they're like really young. Mm -hmm. It's wild. It's wild. You would think that like people like that. I'm like, how are you having kids? Like, is that publicity? Because like I'm pretty sure those people are like know how to not have. You a know kid. what it is? It's not publicity. It's a dynasty. I guess that's they true. have fuck you money. That's they have true. crazy that's true. stupid. That's true. Fat Why not money? have a kid whenever you can have eighty people raising it that aren't you? Yeah, you know? right. Like you, I mean, you can have the luxury of having a baby with no responsibility if you really want to, and you have that much money. I would just get a surrogate if we're really gonna do that. What's like, that? Oh, like have like a surrogate. Like have are you talking about artificial insemination? Yeah, yeah, because like carrying a child, like that hurts. Wait, what is what? I, I like I was saying, if you have enough money to like like have other people take care of your kids and like do all that you might as well just get a surrogate and have them carry your child so you don't have to go through childbirth and stuff oh but you get to keep the kid yeah do you think there's something about keeping it like saying it's your own well or? i mean kim actually her last baby was from a surrogate or something like that because she like had to have her tubes tied does that mean kanye did it with some other girl um i think it was like um a procedure <laughs> 
Wait, 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 wait. Like she, uh, she puts her eggs in somebody else. Yeah, you can do that. Wait, maybe. What? Are you serious? Or like they just put his room. I think it's something like that. They rented another human body. Have you never heard of someone having a surrogate? I've never heard of this. Well, like a lot of people that can't have children, like they have surrogates. It's like really common. No, I've never heard it's of this. Well, I mean, like, haven't you seen on um, on Friends? Did you ever watch Friends? I watched Friends. You, you watched one single friend? No. Um, <laughs> Phoebe. I, just, I was only watching Jennifer Aniston <laughs> the entire time. Phoebe was a surrogate for her, like, on the show. Her brother and his wife, like, needed, like, she couldn't carry the baby. So they, like, um, so, like, what they do is they put the sperm and the egg together. Uh, like not in a petri dish but like you know just for your imagination they put it together in a petri dish and then they insert that into someone else and they rent the womb for nine months yeah that is either what and so like it's like the greatest favor you could do for somebody or it's like and then she had and then they ended up having triplets and like that's common because like if you're so you're gonna you're gonna do multiple eggs because only like you expect like out of the eight eggs like one will attach well the triplets were all fraternal obviously because it was two boys and a girl so that was like three separate eggs that actually attached and grew and phoebe I theoretically in the show possible. really i didn't know this was possible so like but you clearly just it is if it happened on friends yeah it's clearly no possible. it really is i mean i learned about it in genetics and stuff but so you just assumed that like if you couldn't have a baby you just like were out of luck is that what you just it was that just your world view? Well, I, I never thought it that far into the future, but, but I, I, mean I didn't like know you could general. rent. You could rent well, womb you're not space. Rent, you're not renting womb space. You're borrowing it. Y- yeah. That's the same thing. Right? It's just like asking someone for their liver or <laughs> something. <laughs> Bro, can I have one of your kidneys? Yeah, yeah, but can you carry my kids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sick ass trade. I'll see yeah, you. Great, I'll great. see you at the <laughs> operating table. <laughs> so it's called the surrogate. Uh, like a yeah, sur- I don't know. surrogate. I don't. It's either you serenade somebody to convince them sur- to surrogate? give you a surrogate. 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 S- surrogate mother. I'm gonna just Google it so we oh can get my some. My goodness. Sur- I'm not. Ooh, I, they're just like really. There's a lot of websites if I'm, like, trying to do it. <laughs> no, I'm not. Add, add, no. add, add. Okay, surrogacy is an arrangement often supported by a local legal agreement whereby a woman agrees to bear a child Stripper. for another person or persons who will become the child's birth parents. Cost. Are there, like, prostitution rings for surrogates? <laughs> like <laughs> guess, guess how much, like, a surrogacy costs. I, as much as a baptism? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Don't uh, you just throw the baby in some water? I don't think it costs that much. <laughs> no, how much do you think it's it costs? Give me a number. I'm, I, gonna, I'm gonna guess twenty thousand dollars. Ninety to a hundred and thirty, depending on the in- individual agreement. So you pay the person. So like, say I'm just really down on my money. I guess I could like really look into that, you know. And that's, I mean, if you think about it, your yearly income. It's only gonna suck for the last three, right? Okay, except for you know, I'm terrified of children and pregnancy and birth you just get a c-section no uh, yeah i will never have abs <laughs> <laughs> they literally do you know what they do? they have to like push your abs to the side i was a c-section baby so explain more they literally open the stomach and they have to push all the muscles and everything to the side to get the baby out of the stomach well you know a baby comes out of this otherwise yeah I know, but that, like, and then comes back together. This is, like, a surgery, and then they have to, like, sew you up. Anyway, uh, back I'm going to gonna ask my mom. I'm going home for Thanksgiving break very soon. I'm going to be asking my mother about a C-section and what it was like. So. I'm curious now. I'm sure she will be like, it sucked, Jordan. Uh, that's all you And you know. weren't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so donor sperm can also be used. Gestational surrogates. A technique called in vitro fertilization, IVF, if you will, now makes it possible to gather eggs from the mother, fertilize them with the sperm from the father, and place the embryo in the uterus of a gestational surrogate. The surrogate then carries the baby until birth. Okay. A lot of big words, and wow. 
According wow. to the law, a donor of a surrogate mother has no parental rights over the child born, and the child born is legally the child of the prospective parents. You can choose between blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, so you learn something new every day. Wow. I'm glad you – I'm sure you didn't want to hear all of that about uh, – yeah, yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> How do we even get here? Oh, Kim Kardashian. You drove. Oh. Oh. I took the bear line. <laughs> <laughs> hey, would you mind doing like a, a detour route just for me? I'm going over right off campus. Yeah. <laughs> just whip you over there. I've actually done that freshman year, like actually going out cup like a couple of times. There was like that one old lady. She might have died. Georgia. Is that her yeah. name? She no, she was like a a local icon. Yeah. yeah. Did she die? Did she die? I think she died. Are you joking? Oh my god, I don't know. Can we cut this part out? It feels so awkward. You know that Nelly song? It's like, hey, little. Oh, it's that Porsche. It's like, hey, little Porsche. I wanna ride ya. Now this is getting inappropriate. I don't feel that way about a dead person. I hope she's not dead. Me neither. But a lot of times we'd be like, yeah, so we actually wanna go there. And she's like, well, I ain't gonna make you walk. And then she'd drive us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so kind. That's awesome. That's cool. And, like, I remember one time I'd, like, she asked us what frat party we were going to, and we told her, and she was like, now, if you were my kid, I would tell you not to do that. And we were like, well, we've, like, been there before. Like, she's like, well, I just haven't heard good things. And I was like, okay, well, we're, we, I, well, I don't know where you want me to go from here. Like, <laughs> Did she, she took you wherever you wanted to go? It was, like, a, two or three times she, like, definitely, like, made stops for us, like, took us different places. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I think she just didn't want teenage girls walking around intoxicated on campus or downtown. Mm -hmm. No, that's smart. Yeah. That's super smart. Yeah, she was really cool. I mean, she pretty much is an Uber at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It was back freshman year when we, like, forgot Uber existed, I guess. We used, like, all sobers in freaking Bear Line. I don't know. It was probably super new at the time. Yeah. I guess it still existed. Or g -Eazy yeah. rapped about it my freshman year. That's how I learned what Uber was. Oh wow! Through Jeezy rapping about it. Thanks, Jeezy, making our commute. No, what's com com commute? Public commute more accessible. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. Why do I just forget words? Just forget them. I think that there's something called I, I think it's called Presque View. It's very comparable to Deja Vu. Oh. And it's pretty much, it's Presque View, and there there's some other view. But press gay view is pretty much whenever you say a word so many times that the neurons associated with that word become desensitized to it. Like oh, that's completely. Weird. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Oh, that's weird. But yeah, yeah. Like, like have you ever like heard a word that you clearly know, like you obviously know, or even a name, and you've just maybe heard it or used it, overused it so many times that it just seems foreign? It just seems... Like, that's a weird experience. Yeah. That's a weird fucking experience. Yeah. I don't know. Or, like, just when you say words over and over, like, in a row, and then it becomes, like, sounding weird or whatever. You're like, it like just sounds just foreign. Like it sounds like Jordan, the first time Jordan, you've ever heard the word in the Jordan, ever. Jordan, 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 Jordan. It starts to sound weird. That's like me telling Siri to say my name. Be like, Siri, say my name, baby. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. My name in my phone is actually Calm Dumpster. My old roommate said I won it, and that was seven months ago. Oh. <laughs> and they actually, it wasn't even that they said I won it. I just said, you dare me to do this? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure. You I, freaking I dare guess. me, dude? Freaking double dog dare me, dude. I'll totally won't do it. I'll totally do it. You just have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, sure. One, <laughs> one <laughs> fucking like, right. One like and I'll do it. <laughs> Likes yeah. the post yourself. Here, we'll, we'll test this out. This was on my old phone. I think it's still the same thing. Aw, my friend my friend FaceTimed me. Aww. I called him yesterday. It's it's Joe. He's living in Kansas City. And I was like, Aww. hey, man, how you doing? I just thought I'd take. Wait, how do you? Oh, this is how you use Siri. Siri, what's my name? Siri, what's my name? Sorry. Siri. It's all good. No, I didn't say sorry. <laughs> sorry, bitch. Siri, what's my name? I don't know who you are, but you can tell me in Siri settings. 
Tap on my info and then choose yourself. Hey, Jordan. What? Hey, but you got a new phone. Maybe that's why. No, look at it. Read it. I know. I see it. It says, it says cum, cum dumpster. dumpster. That's what it says. It does. I yeah. read it with my own two eyes. I can read. Good job, Emily. Hey, did you call? Hey, Buckaroo. I always say that. I always say that. I say, hey, did you call? And they clearly called. But I still say, did you call? Yeah, you said to me, you ta- I told you the other day, and you said, hey, did you call? And then you sent a second message, and I was like, okay, well, you obviously called, but what's up? <laughs> <And I was laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, sometimes, like, I will get, a, like, a pocket dial. You know what I mean? So I guess it is, like, a feasible question. Like, did you intend to call? You know? Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, they called, but, like, did they intend to? It's a good point. It's a good point. But yeah. most, I, I most of the like time, it's intentional. We're kind of over the pocket dial thing. We no longer have, uh, like, freaking flip phones and slidey boys where there's just buttons. Slidey boys. Like a like a rumor. Like a rumor? It's a rumor. That was my first my first uh, phone I ever had. And I set a ringtone. So every time I got a text, it would be... Pop, pop, what a Chevy, butterfly, does stunt, stunt, there's a habit. That whole thing for one text me- text message. Yeah, and it was really annoying. Because it was super annoying. Yeah, it was like the first 24 hours I had a phone. I'll, I'll never forget it. I was just sitting around in the kitchen just constantly getting texts. Just stunt, oh, stunt, there's a habit. constantly getting text. You're cool. Yeah, you know, you got to text everybody, let them know you got a new Whatever. cell phone. That's true. It's exciting stuff. I remember, like, I, I know I still have this in my house, but I have, like, a stack of like seven slide phones i don't know what it was but i broke phones like they were nails that's something that's easily hearts i don't know can we throw them against the concrete wall at some point like what are are you gonna use them for nothing but and then we could we could reduce reuse and recycle them cool 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 cool. yeah we could do that we could make like a sick video and have like a like we could have like a thumbnail that's like really cool and it could be like this whole name and then we could like you know what i mean like most youtubers that like do really actually average dumb things and then have ridiculous like clickbait yeah we could do that we'd like throws old phone against wall it explodes whole wall falls down and then north korea attacks yeah but then it just does just like all just silent and we just like throw like four phones against the wall and that's the whole video (laughs) I like it. The clickbait. The clickbait. Yeah. It really is. Like, I've been disappointed so many times with clickbait. <laughs> all it is is false advertising. Yeah. That's all fucking clickbait is. It's just false advertising. I it's like, hey, look at this big thing that happened. And then you get to the video, and it's like, wow, well, I'm just disappointed and staring yeah. at your face. <laughs> I'm just staring at you. Plug yourself for 10 minutes. Plug your plug your merch for five more you get to your 15 minute mark uh you give your uh ad and then you do one minute of a video yeah yeah and that's the clickbait jake paul <laughs> which by the way you said you don't like the paul brothers i do like logan i know you do i know you do and that's why i sometimes hesitate i think that if i gave him more of a chance that i could uh maybe hop on board enough to no longer have the dislike status and have the eh, status for him uh-huh you know? Um, especially because, <laughs> especially because now don't get too sentimental about this, but I respect your taste <laughs> and YouTubers. It's not a strong opinion, but I like him. I, I do yeah, like him. Yeah. That's good to hear. And I, I do I'm think sure he's a genius. So happy. I, d- I have a strong opinion about this. I think he's a genius. I think he's incredibly intelligent. I mean, I do think that they're both geniuses in the way that they make more money than me, have more fans than me. Uh, so I'm really just kind of dissing them for nothing because obviously they're doing better in life than me, so who cares, you know? Well, maybe not. Uh, well, maybe they struggle with things you don't struggle with. Yeah, like being a bully online. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Wait, wait, I want to show you this video. I may have showed you this. I may have shown you this, like, the other day. Okay. Oh, what was... This guy, Vincent Marcus, made this video, and he's making fun of Jake Paul. It's like a Jake Paul parody. Did I show you this? Yeah. I did? Yeah. With Tana? Yep, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, I want to... Just the way he says Calabasas in this video. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, yeah, because you have to, like, scroll through to the YouTube, and it's, like, really stressful. Yeah, I, I give up. Yeah, 
Brett Leifer, my roommate, just got a fucking Instagram. Wow. Aw, I want to follow him. Oh, that's so cute. He was talking yesterday about how he doesn't want to get one or how he's like, he hasn't had social media for so long. It's like so foreign to oh him. Oh my gosh. This is going to mean nothing to you, but Alabama Hannah won Dancing with the Stars. Nice. She's She was like the last bachelorette. And she, like, the guy she, like, picked ended up, like, having a girlfriend at home, and he used her f- to become a famous music artist. So then she went on Dancing with the Stars, and she just won. And I just watched the blo- the bloopers for the next Bachelor, and the next Bachelor was her third runner-up. Third runner-up. Um, uh, I- on her show, and, like, there was this whole thing about how they had sex in a windmill. Anyway, so there was, like, in the, like, preview for it, she, like, goes back on the show, like, with him, and that's never happened, and is like, yeah, like, I want another chance with you, LOL, LOL. And I'm like, get off TV. Like, you had your whole season. You just won freaking Dancing with the Stars. Do you really need to go freaking get on um, another s- another season of Bachelor? She's really? just riding the wave. She's definitely riding the wave. She, I mean, she's a sweet girl. I like her, but it's like, and she, like, really likes to act like she just doesn't, like, care. She's like, I don't need love. But I'm like, because, so she, her first guy, like, he ended up whatever. Her second runner-up, she, like, they, like, ended up going on a date or two, like, in the real world afterward. But now he's dating Gigi Hadid or one of those girls. I've heard of that person. Yeah, she's a model. And so he's dating her now, uh, casually. And so, she, whatever. And so now she's going for her third runner-up. I'm like, come on. Sis. Date literally anyone else in the world. Mm. Like, there are literally other people in the world. You don't have to just keep going back to the people on your show. <laughs> like, anyone else. <laughs> Bachelor's so weird to me. It is so weird. It's such a weird thing. So weird. I think it's people just kind of riding the shows. Oh, it's presence absolutely. Presence that gain, gain a following and get famous. I think so, too. The only, the only, I don't think that The Bachelor or The Bachelorette are very, um, realistic but i think bachelor in paradise is like the closest to realistic you're gonna get because it's instead of like 20 30 girls going for one guy it's like 10 girls 10 guys and then they like put them together and like i guess that's just like a small version of the real world you sounds know like I mean? a zoo yeah oh it is it's crazy but i mean that's a little bit more realistic because it's like you actually can like date around and find the one you like or whatever but i don't know it's crazy am i sucked in and hooked yes I absolutely am. Am I excited for January? I wonder how they go about choosing the cast. It's a long process. My um, my I would bet my brother wanted to like nominate his friend for it, but like you have to get like you have to go through like many many rounds of interviews. You have to like go through a background check. You have to do like STD checks. All the, all these checks you have to like you have to have like. I'm pretty sure you already have to have a little like slight level level of either like celebrity or like um whatever because a lot of people like clay harbor he was on it he went here and then he was like in the nfl so he had like a very minor level of celebrity before he went on it and like another guy like colton he was like one of the bachelors like he was in the nfl and now he like runs a nonprofit. and like a couple of the girls like alabama alabama hannah won like she's like a pageant queen like she won like miss usa or like was the second runner-up or something like that so like a lot of the people have like at least very very low like they can't be celebrities but they have like very very low level of something to like get them something you know what i mean and then they also have to like pass a bunch of checks and they have to like be really attractive and they have to have like i guess decent personalities and like all this stuff it's like a really really long process but it's crazy because the contestants don't get paid anything they're like the bachelor or the bachelorette gets like two hundred thousand dollars but the contestants like they can live in the mansion for free and they get like food stocked for free but they have to like do every pay for everything else and like people have said that they'll spend like multiple thousands like upwards of like eight thousand dollars on clothes just to go on the show really yeah like contestants because like you have to have like so you imagine like if you say okay how many episodes are there say there's like 15 episodes so that means there's at least 15 cocktail dinners or wh- or cocktail parties i know that doesn't make anything any sense to you so say you need at least 15 cocktail dresses they're gonna have like full length ones so those are gonna be like prom dresses prom dresses are a couple hundred dollars so like that's just a thou- couple thousand dollars just there for the dresses 
then you have to have like clothing for all the different activities so like you could go like hiking or like skydiving or like they go to like freaking they go like to different countries for some of their dates like they do crazy stuff and you have to be like you're on camera every second of your life so of course you want to look good all the time so like people buy so much and it's it's insane but they don't get compensated at all really yeah do you think what's the incentive fame yeah because if you make it to top five you're definitely going to get a lot of like if you make it at least how many followers like bare minimum are you getting on instagram let's go to okay top five i'm gonna go a million i'm gonna go but like you get endorsements so like i'm gonna go to this one person her name's heather she was on colton season she probably was top five or six she's verified she has like 221,000 which isn't like that much but like she has like um endorsements and stuff still you know what i mean interesting and like let's go to someone who's like pretty famous like hannah g hannah g has 1.5 million okay and like she has like a like i bet that girl is rolling in money she's (sighs) yeah but yeah I don't know. You get fame. I mean, like, you get money. You get, like, low level of celebrity a- as long as you make it to, like, a top whatever, at least. That's crazy. Yeah, because if you make it further, <laughs> that was, like, something you could tell. Like, you and I know, but, like, nobody <laughs> else would know. They're just like, why are they making those faces? Yeah, that's that's wild. That's wild. It's, I don't know. I had an opinion. I just can't remember what it was. Oh, oh, it makes sense. It makes sense if you're to the top five because people – are people voting you on? No. Or no, but you're just making through the process of elimination yeah. of the show? Yeah, and so okay. it's like so it's like you get watched for, like, the whole season. You know what I mean? If you're top five, then, like, yeah. you're very well known. You make and it to way more episodes. I'm going to look up what John Paul Jones has. John Paul Jones. How does the normal Bachelor work? If, you, if you're making it to top five, does the guy pick – so here's the thing it it's partially producers partially the guy but so basically like every week like three or four people will be voted off right okay and then you get up to like um i think top four or five is hometowns so like you take them you go to their hometowns with them and meet their parents and then top three is fantasy suites and so you have three fantasy suites as like three people so basically you have three nights in a row where you have sex with all three people so like you get fantasy suite with first one second one third one and then you kick one of them out and then you get top two and then you propose to one of them wait okay let's go back to the the fantasy suites <laughs> this the wait so you he like they the same night three nights in a row so you have one night with one girl one next night with the next next night with the next and, like, you don't technically have to, like, have sex in the fantasy suites, but that's the first opportunity you get. You're not supposed to, like, have sex with the girls or the guys, vice versa, before fantasy suites. But, like, okay. we're pretty sure on Bachelor in Paradise they do it anyway. Okay. But, yeah, so that's, like, how it works. And, like, for certain people, like, Alabama Hannah, like, she had sex with Pilot Pete, but she did it with Tyler. And, like, she just wanted to, like, I don't know, have an intimate night with, I don't know. And like she and like Colton, he skipped the fantasy suites because so he was a virgin going on the show, and he like skipped the fantasy suites and then like ended up like he was like I know I want to be with Ka- Cassie and then she like quit and then he like ran after her and then they had this whole thing and I don't know but yeah it does it just it doesn't seem like they're actually looking for love it seems what they're doing is they're riding the the TV show wave and then they're gaining fame I think that the the bachelor the bachelorette like the person is but i definitely think that like 90 percent of the contestants aren't looking for love and then and then they might actually like fall in love with the person you know what i mean Mm -hmm. because like some people like take themselves out of the race if they're like not feeling it like that's what hannah did like the one one girl hannah or heather did she like just took herself out because she was like i know i'm not gonna get there with you and like i'm like are like I'm here, I don't want to, whatever. And so, like, certain people take themselves out of the race if they, like, aren't, like, feeling it for the person. and what, Or, like, some people just, like, not try very hard and they get kicked off. But I, I do genuinely feel like the top people do end up, like, falling for the other person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, definitely, like, 90% of the people are on there for fame. Okay. Like, the early people. Wow. 
It's a weird concept. It's, it's a so weird, weird concept. It's so I think we've talked about this before, but it's funny because if like w- I walked up to a guy and he was like, "Yeah, I'm dating 30 girls." I'd be like, "You fucking psycho." But like then I walk up to the bachelor and he's like, "Yeah, I'm on a show with my whole life being taped and I'm dating 30 girls." And I'm like, "Hell yeah, let me <laughs> watch it. Let me watch it <laughs> and love it." Wait, so do you do you think a normal bachelor they're having sex before? No, I don't think so. Really? Because like they can't even like really have necessary necessarily like contact outside of like the dates and the cocktail parties. Well, wow, okay. So because like all the girls live in like ha- one house together, and then like the bachelor lives somewhere else. So like you would, I think it's like kind of keeps them in check because if you're like dating the same guy and like you see like one of the girls is like sneaking off with him, you're gonna be like, you're not fucking supposed to do that. You know what I mean? Like I think yeah. they kind of keep each other in check. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, no, like, that makes sense. Because like a lot of times, like they'll be like. I just, like, haven't been able to go on a date with him in a really long time, and I didn't get any time at the cocktail party to talk to him, and, like, I just feel like our connection's really slipping, and this girl is, like, just getting way more time than me. That's, like, 90... That's literally how, like, every... It sounds all the time. And so, like, I can't imagine... I can imagine, like, the girls, if, like, one of them saw, like, another one of them going off with a guy, like, when they weren't supposed to, they would, like, really say something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they're, like, very possessive and, like, very, like... People are, like, hardcore about it. But... Other shows it like sounds like an unfair advantage. Like it could be used. Like if if you were a girl who was very strategic with it, you'd probably be fucking that guy just to get an edge up on the other girls to make it further mm-hmm. in the show. Yeah, and and there's other shows like Paradise Hotel and like Love Island that are definitely just to win. Like Paradise Hotel, I think that was the one. Was that or was it? Uh, a guy from my high school won it. You know. And uh, Bobby Ray. What is what is Paradise Hotel? It was like Hotel. it was like the first season was on, and it was like kind of like The Bachelor, but basically it was like, well, there was like multiple guys and multiple girls, and like every like week you had to be like paired up, and like if you weren't coupled up, then you would get like kicked off, and so like and then at the end like a couple wins, and then like they were like okay, but and like the pr- and it was it's more to win the prize money than to actually like find love like the bachelors like to find love and get engaged but paradise hotel was like to stay coupled up and so on that like the guy from my high school he was like coupled up with this girl who was like literally like a backstabbing bitch the whole time like he didn't know it but like the viewers knew it that she was like trying to make other arrangements like throughout it and so he eventually like found out that she was kind of like a backstabber and then he like there was like this trust game at the end and anyway he won all the money and she got nothing Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really cool. How how much old is he older than you? He's I think he's a year younger than my brother, so he's like your age or a year younger. Isn't your brother a year older than me? Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah, but he's only uh, like five months older than you. Okay, okay. So I would So he would have been literally my age. Yeah, I would say this guy was probably twenty three when it happened. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's really cool. And he, he won like two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And got to be on a show. And he, like, has a low level of celebrity now, I would say, because he, like, does Instagram endorsements and stuff. He actually went to my brother's fight. I thought that was cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Were they friends? I, uh, so there's, like, this one guy that, like, I knew and my brother knew, and I, I know that they knew each other, and then he was one of Bob's, like, best friends, so I think that, like, maybe they, like, knew each other, like, connected, you know what I mean? So I don't know if they were, like, necessarily good friends, but they definitely knew each other. But he went to support your brother, not yeah. to support yeah. somebody else? Yeah, yeah, There's really? like a picture of them together and stuff, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was so surprised. I, like, my brother, like, posted pictures or my mom did or something, and I was like, oh, my God, that's Bobby Ray. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. It's it's weird, like, seeing people from your high school do stuff like that. You have and some cool people from your high school. Yeah, like, that guy and then, like, a guy in my grade, like, just signed for, like, the Washington Nationals with, like, a freaking... You have the famous YouTuber, too. Oh, that girl? Actually, we do actually, so we have that one girl that's, like, a vlogger, and she's, like, still in high school, and then we have this other girl, uh, Mo Girl Probs. Have you ever heard of her? I'm going to bring her up. I was going to, like, put you in touch with her. I don't um, know. Every one of my family is texting me. That's all I got to say. Just, it's really annoying. My brother asked me to babysit. My mom's, like, asking me questions. It's annoying. Um, so this girl, yeah, she, her name is Brittany. She's, like, pretty famous on like youtube or like twitter and like those platforms okay but yeah so we have a lot of like i don't know people doing cool what does stuff. she do exactly i don't know i think she's like a youtuber i don't know let me look her up 
You down to wrap this up in a few? Yeah, I gotta pee so bad. Same. That's like mainly mm. the reason. And like, I, I didn't really feel like going another 20 minutes. How long has it been? Uh, an hour 20. Oh, wow. Yeah, this girl has like 116.9 thousand followers, but... Really? Wow. Yeah, she like gets pretty decent, like, whatever's on her tweets and stuff. I don't know. She's verified. I don't That's know cool. What. That's yeah. pretty cool. But yeah, there's a lot of people from my high school that do cool stuff. Yeah. And then Trud, of course. He lived with me. He does that's the his coolest stuff. Yeah, yeah, that cool was thing. his. That's his. That's his celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then all the all the Kappa Sigs, all the guys in the frats. I don't know. I just feel like your your high school is everywhere. It's funny. It is. No, it's everywhere. My my best friend Abby like always makes fun of me because it, I swear anywhere I go, I will just be like. Oh hey, blah blah blah. Like, and they'll be like, "Yeah, do you know blah blah blah?" Like the other day, I was. It's not that big of a high school either. Like, how many how many people in the graduating class? Like three hundred. Yeah, mine had like five hundred fifty. Yeah. And well, I I have like four or five people from here. Like they're all gone. They're all gone yeah, now. Yeah. No, so many. I think people. I had ten people tops. I think we had like thirty to forty just from my graduating class go here. That's crazy. Yeah, but like the other day at the tailgate, I. I was taking I was taking a picture of Abby's boyfriend and his friends because they like needed us to take a picture and some guy just like jumps in and then him and like one of my friends they were like being drunk together they were like hugging I don't know you know how like you know how guys do weird drunk things I don't know and so I was like yo like do you know him and he was like nah not at all but we're buddies now and then this guy like I don't know how we got to start talking about it we literally had like a thirty second conversation and named like seven people and and like. <laughs> and, and that we knew from my high school and he didn't go there and i was like how did that just happen that's so like funny. what that's hilarious it was so weird i was like what <laughs> yeah it's so weird that's weird i'm, I'm curious if most state does more marketing to your high school specifically because you would think like i'm telling you like not many people from my high school went I, here i think it's just like the ball got rolling eventually and then like it just like keeps going you know what i mean because mm -hmm. like we like you know a lot of guys will be like oh i knew all these guys in this frat at that one school and i went and, and visited and it was fun or like you know what i mean so yeah, I, I think yeah. it's just like once a lot of people goes and like we have a had a drastic like decrease like my year was like 40 people maybe more but like i think it's lower to like 20 people from each graduating class now like it's it's significantly lower see my high school is the exact opposite not many people in my class went but my cousin like he's your age mm -hmm ton of people from his yeah. like there were like six or seven of them that came like they four of them live behind us yeah like, yeah that yeah. house right there I don't, I don't know what it is i honestly don't like grant i think me and grant are possibly the only two from my class down here which at our peak we probably had 10 people 10 people from my high school that's crazy that's just crazy that to is me. crazy well, if we're talking percentages your percentage is like probably like five times as much yeah it's drastically higher Okay, cool. High five cool. to end it? Yeah. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt me a little bit too, honestly. Could you be. were the one doing all the stretching. Came though. together. Cool. Well, I'm going to get a um, an artificial baby in, cool, cool, in cool. the meantime. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Are you going to be the surrogate? Is that. I can't afford gonna, not you, to be, you so go yes. Generous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You, I would consider if I were you. That's 90K, baby. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm scared of pregnancy. I'm scared Think about of that. Children. That's $10,000 a month. What if the baby falls through my pelvic floor? I don't even know what that means. I don't know what it means either, but I'm scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> then no, it's, it's not going to happen. It's an irrational fear if you don't know what it no, means. No, I know it's not ever going to happen, but I don't even, I'm too scared to even have my own children, let alone someone else's. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, cool. You get bathroom first. Thank you. You know, because I'm a gentleman, so. That's so kind. All right. There we are.